Years ago, small-scale producers were growing indigenous plants from community-cared and kept seeds, until powerful companies, in an attempt to commodify farming and food production, sold them patented and GM seeds, along with chemical fertilizers and pesticides. While the benefits from having greater yields were enjoyed for a time, the overuse of chemical fertilizers and other modern farming methods have damaged the land and environment. This, along with the rising price of oil, has meant that many can no longer afford or access the industrialised farming methods that now dominate global food production. Many large-scale farmers receive financial assistance through large subsidies, but small-scale farmers don't have the support or the resources to boost production. Weather unpredictability from climate change is affecting crops with drought, flooding and other severe and erratic weather changes. Small-scale producers are often lacking proper storage for their produce, so they cannot store their food for the winter or create stable income from a stored harvest in the off-season. They have challenges getting their produce to markets because of bad infrastructure, and expensive middlemen, along with cheap imported food, have created markets with prices that local producers cannot compete with. Women produce much of the world's food, but their challenges are multiplied because they don't have the same rights to the land as men. Governments in developing countries are pushing people off their land and offering it to foreign governments and corporations for extremely cheap prices. They invest in offshore land to grow crops for food and fuel. Once it's grown and harvested, it's sent out of the country, leaving its people with uncertainty about where their land or food will come from. Currently, one third of corn crops grown in America are used for biofuels. Now that the demand for biofuel has taken over available cropland, companies look elsewhere to grow their corn. But filling an average sized car with biofuel amounts to as much maize as the average African person consumes in an entire year. And the less food there is for people, the more the food prices go up. Industrial farming to make biofuels also results in large amounts of CO2 being released into the atmosphere, accelerating climate change and reversing the positive effects that cleaner fuels have. Big investors are treating food as another traded commodity and while it means big profits for agribusiness firms, many people are suffering because of it. The UN is calling for an investigation into the possibility that global food prices are being artificially pushed up by financial speculators. The prices of staple food could more than double in the next 20 years, and the demand for fuels used in industry and transport is adding to the increase. We have enough food on our planet to feed everyone, but hunger and obesity are indicators that our food system is not working. Around one-third of all food produced is not consumed, but wasted. This amounts to nearly 1.3 billion tonnes. In wealthy countries, food is wasted when corporations, retailers and consumers toss perfectly edible portions into the bin. In underdeveloped nations, food goes to waste due to bad infrastructure and inefficient distribution. A few powerful governments and companies dominate the global food system. Three agribusiness firms control nearly 90% of grain trading between them. They have utilised advances in science and technology to boost production, but they have failed to adopt sustainable practices to ensure the survival of our environmental systems. Food is responsible for up to 30% of global greenhouse gas emissions. Too many of the ways we grow food today are using up and destroying the natural resources we rely on. Arable land per person is decreasing, having almost halved since 1960, and water is even scarcer than land. Agriculture accounts for 70% of global fresh water use. The rising demand for oil to fuel our factories, power our cars, and meet our consumerist needs, as well as the increasing demand for meat and dairy products, is putting added pressure on the system. By 2050, there will be 9 billion people on the planet, and demand for food will have increased by 70%. As seasons and rainfall patterns become more erratic and unpredictable due to climate change, it will be even harder for farmers to know when to sow, cultivate and harvest their crops. On top of this, extreme weather events can wipe out harvest in a single stroke. The global food system must be transformed. It's actually already started, and in most cases, governments aren't leading it. It's changing from the roots with individuals, organisations and movements, connecting globally via vision for a healthy system that supports everyone. A growing desire for change has been gaining momentum and its focus is a system with global solidarity, where we listen to the unheard voices and needs of all and act out of cooperation, not competition. 
where we share resources fairly and value the environment, and where everyone has enough to eat, always. The shared vision that is growing from the roots is pressuring governments and corporations to change their old ways, giving way to innovation and increasing solidarity. Consumers are putting pressure on companies to shift to ethical and sustainable practices. Governments are now being forced to intervene on rising food prices, and steps are being taken toward better policies and trade agreements. Whether you work on a local, regional, national or global level, you can be a part of the movement to grow a better future. These are what some of the possibilities look like, but they are just the beginning. New ways of thinking, producing and consuming. A paradigm shift in agriculture towards more sustainable and ecologically friendly practices that benefit the world's 900 million small farmers, not just agribusiness. We don't just focus on crop yields, we focus on quality and distribution, better waste management, sustainable consumption and green consumerism. Adaption to climate change and a reduced vulnerability to impacts, as well as a global deal on climate change to ensure countries are working together towards more sustainable practices. We preserve our resources and share them fairly. We take action on trade agreements. We regulate banks and reform bad policies. We support small-scale, environmentally friendly production methods based on local knowledge. Women are empowered and the door is open for them to join the conversation on land use. We support communities to fight against corporations that are trying to push them off their land. We invest in smallholder agriculture so that communities can support themselves and don't go to bed hungry. How are you and your community impacted by the global food crisis? What are people doing to address these issues in your community? How can you help grow the movement?